A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the 56th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Before we get into the video, be sure to like, share with your friends and family and hit that subscribe button. It's always greatly appreciated. This is the 2 meter temperature normally for June across Europe, July and indeed August. And of course, we're about to end meteorological summer and begin autumn 2023. What may that bring? And then what may that bring following that as we head towards the winter season? This was the scene, by the way, um, in Mallorca, I believe it was yesterday. Dramatic scenes, severe thunderstorms and damaging winds brought in due to fresh Atlantic air moving into that hot, humid, steamy heat wave conditions across southern and eastern portions of Europe. So the latest heat wave is now ended across western portions of Europe where we've seen temperatures as high as 44.2 Celsius, a new provisional all-time record for France for the month of August. And we also seen temperatures into the and then around the mid 40s across Iberia. We had 38 Celsius in Switzerland and we had temperatures into the low 40s in other areas of Western Europe in recent times. So this is the global uh, two meter temperature anomaly for the planet at the moment here for August. And you can see here a tremendous amount of warmth. This will probably wind up being the warmest on record for the, the C datas 0.5 data. And uh, we have got a lot of warm areas. Uh, Antarctica below average across many areas, but Australia warmer than average. Yes, we do have some um, you know, intrusions of cold coming up from Antarctica in the southeastern portions of, of Australia. We've got uh, some cool still across northern India, Pakistan, thanks to the ongoing um, heavy rainfall associated with the monsoon, of course. And the uh, parts of the Western, believe it or not, Western United States, Northern and Eastern United States below average here. The, we'll have a look at the uh, the continental breakdown here. So this is Europe, uh, quite the contrast now uh, after the, the very chilly opening 10 to 15 days of the month. As expected here on marfoganweather.com that we would start to see a turnaround taking place from below to slightly above average. Warmer and wetter than average August looks to be a given, I think, overall. And this will tip the balance with regards to a warmer than average summer season overall. Looking at North America for the month of August here, you can see here that we've got uh, plenty of warmth across the continent. But we have some interest in cool areas, southern and central California, Nevada, Utah, northern Arizona, Wyoming. It's been one of the coldest summers in a long time here, North Dakota. We've got parts of the uh, Ohio Valley and the Northeast below average. And then we look at the African continent here. We have got um, probably warmer compared to cold and average here. We've got um, Asia. And you can see here there is a lot of warmth on that chart here. Like I said before, um, cool and average across northern India thanks to all that heavy rainfall. Yeah, it is a warmer than average planet here, folks. That can be a contributing factor. Arguably, I need to do more research, but it could be a side effect of the Tonga Hunga volcanic eruption releasing all that water vapor into the atmosphere. Of course, the oceans are warming up big time. We'll look at that in just a second here. And yeah, there is conflicting ideas with regards to you know the Tonga Hunga, what inf influence that's having on the global atmosphere. And of course, we've got the ongoing El Nino taking place. We're supercharging the warmth across uh, South America, but there is areas of snow and cold even in South America. It's a big continent, of course, so let's not get too sucked into the South American side of the, the planet where it is uh, significantly warmer than average uh, overall. And, you know, when you've got super warm waters up against the west coast of, of that continent, there's no surprise that we're seeing abnormally warm conditions on the continent as a result of that. This is South America and this is for the month of August here. So you can see here cool and average conditions across parts of the Andes Mountains here. So that west side uh, with elevation, you've actually got below average conditions here. Uh, Patagonia down across southern Chile and Argentina here, you've got below average 
conditions here, warmer than average further north. But of course, there's the El Nino reflecting on that warmth across South America. But it is not all warm. Let's say, let's just remember that here. And looking at the Australasian continent here, Oceania, you can see here that we do have slightly below average across the far southwest of Western territories, Western Australia, should I say, and also the coastal areas of New South Wales. We've got below average conditions here, even up across uh, the far north um, of Australia, northeast corner, we've got actually slightly below average conditions here as well. Let me know what you think of the summer uh, overall. Has it been warmer than average or cooler than average in your part of the world? I would be interested to hear exactly what you've got to say about that. This is the current sea surface temperatures, by the way, um, according to NOAA. And you can see here, of course, lots of reds on that chart here. And you can see very, very warm conditions. We've had ongoing heat wave conditions across parts of Japan and the Koreas. Uh, we've also had record breaking warm conditions here as well and uh, sorry a uh, record breaking wet conditions so to say so very interesting stuff indeed here we've also got of course a very very warm north atlantic at the moment here there is slightly cool and average it depends on the data set and the 30 year the 30 year mean depending on what you look at here but we do have a strip of cool and average here and it'll be interesting to see as we step towards the the mid second half of autumn do we start to see cooling taking place here? If we do, we would have the potential of a tripole over the North Atlantic. Warm, cool, warm. That can sometimes have an influence on more negative NAO pattern here. Of course, we've had a firmly negative NAO summer. It looks as if we have to go all the way back to 2009 for the last time we had such a negative NAO summer. I may be mistaken about that. I'm sure Ryan, uh, or Shrian Bruin, I'm doing well, aren't I? It's too early in the morning. I'm used to doing a, a, a video here mid and late afternoon, but I'm, I happen to be going over to the in-laws for a Sunday dinner. So as promised, always have to keep my subscribers, um, you know, prioritized here. So uh, must get the video done. So early today, and uh, I'm actually not that long out of bed either. Had a, a, a nice long Sunday lion, of course, as well. So that was quite nice. But anyway, the El Nino, you can see here, uh, strong and warming we're getting that westerly wind burst so we're starting to increase that warming a little bit further west here for winter conditions and we're going to be talking about that this upcoming week by the way uh, so stay tuned for that what we want to see for a colder winter across europe across north america is getting that warmth away from the south coast of south america towards the central portion of the pacific ocean here where we've got other interesting aspects to consider it looks as if the um Western Mediterranean is warm. Northwest Atlantic is warm as well, as you can see here. But uh, looking at, let's have a quick look and see what I can find here. So this is the CFS V2, by the way, forecast. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to show you the indexes first. Uh, if I can get to the right chart here. There we go. So looks as if the El Nino is going to be firmly in control. Um you know, by the time we reach uh, September, November, and indeed January, we're going to see that El Nino ongoing here. So it's going to be an El Nino winter, of course. The Indian Ocean Dipole is something that we need to consider as well. So that can have influence on the Man Julian Oscillation, where the areas of convection is focused versus the suppressed phase of the MJO. And uh, it was in unconducive phases during the mid and second half of last winter. Maybe a different story this upcoming winter. We're also looking at the tropics, what influence that may have later down the road. But it looks as if the IOD or the Indian Ocean Dipole will be positive during the autumn season. It looks as if it goes back towards neutral by the time we reach January. But it looks as if it peaks in intensity during the November period here, which is quite interesting stuff. Um, looking at the situation with regards to the CFS V2. So this is uh, September. You can see here, the El Nino is strong. We've got that positive IOD. We've got that warm North Atlantic as well. What influence that may have. I think we're going to have a warmer than average September. How much rainfall we get is going to be open to question. Look at this here. By October, notice the warmth now shifted off the South American coast and towards the central portion of the Pacific. That could be possibly the development 
Madoki El Nino, which is a Central Pacific based El Nino that can have good implications if you like cold winters across Western Europe. Even in the November, it looks like it peaks in intensity and it, it once again it's off the South American coast, keeping an eye on that cool water coming off Canada, off the northeastern United States. Is that going to progress further east to provide a, a favourable uh, tripole over the North Atlantic and then in this December and then it starts to kind of phase, it phase out as we push into January and February. The El Nino starts to weaken as you can see here. So looking at the situation with regards to El Nino and the sudden stratospheric warming situation. Now the QBO, our good friend Richard Trott has showed this tweet. This is back on the 3rd of August. So it's a good wee while ago. And it shows that the QBO or the quasi biennial oscillation is now going from westerly to easterly. So that's a reverse in the mean zone of winds over the equ equatorial region. Yeah, it's a long sentence that. The winds are now starting to reverse from westerly to an easterly. That can have frictional effects in the polar jet stream further north, slowing it down, increasing the chance of more blocking, and also sudden stratospheric warmings are a possibility as well. And speaking about sudden stratospheric warmings, it looks as if with an El Nino, SSW events and frequency are higher with an El Nino than other ENSO parameters. We were in uh, a neutral La Nina for the last three years, uh, and also this made sudden stratospheric warmings more difficult. So does this suggest an increased chance of a sudden stratospheric warming this upcoming winter season? It's possible, given the amount of blocking we had during the autumn, this summer, and then possibly further down the road. Again, is it a side effect to that volcanic eruption that took place underwater in the South Pacific back in January 2022? Again, all open to speculation here. So, uh, looking at, very quickly at the European pattern over the next wee while here, we've got a trough centred over the North Sea. We've got the blocking and the ridging to the west here. As we play forward, we've got reinforcing areas of low pressure coming in from a northwesterly direction, keeping that uh, conditions fresher than average. And then as we play through the period to the final days of the month, we have lo more low pressure coming in from a westerly direction then heights build both to the north and to the west and to the east it looks as if we may start to settle things down week two of september here so we'll watch this space as we go forward looking at the extremes around the world 44.2 celsius looks as if that was a new record for france in recent days i'm going to have to watch my time unfortunately because i need to go in a second here 38.2 celsius recorded in Switzerland, record breaking heat here, of course. 45.0 Celsius recorded in southern Bolivia. Ties the August national record here and the highest temperature ever recorded in winter in South America here. But of course, I'm a great believer that it's been warmer back in the past here. But certainly in the modern era, we are coming close to new record breaking territory for temperature benchmark globally. And uh, that, of course, has to be taken into consideration here. So, yeah, I think, to be honest with you, I've covered enough for now here. Record-breaking warm conditions across parts of the United States in recent times here. We've also got so record-breaking temperatures, all-time records here. Slidell, Louisiana, 108, 107 in Hattiesburg, 107 in Gulfport, Mississippi here. Uh, Pascagoula, uh, Mississippi, 106. All, uh, monthly records here achieved also Pensacola 105 degrees Fahrenheit here. So brutal conditions across southern parts of the United States in recent times here. Have I covered everything? I hope I have. Probably won't. Uh, and uh, I've forgotten, you know, several different things. That's usually the case. Looking at the GFS ensemble here for London, uh, we go uh, from a below average back slightly above average in the next week here. And it looks as if that stays the case through the course of next week here so week one according to the gfs ensemble indicates that we're slightly above average at 850 over the london area um so yeah like i said i hope i have covered everything in the video if i haven't i'll, I'll touch on that in tomorrow's video be sure to like share and subscribe and i'll see you again 
tomorrow with more and we'll talk more about winter as well so stay tuned for that enjoy the rest of your sunday bye for now